We've just built three fake beaver dams to kickstart the restoration of this Scottish river, with the goal of bringing back a thriving riparian ecosystem that will have the potential to support all kinds of native species. So welcome, welcome back to Glassy, welcome back to Scotland, where we are restoring this river by building some fake beaver dams. Yeah, we've done it, we've got it started. I'm very excited to share this with you. We're gonna be telling you why we've been building these dams and how we've been building them. And a little later in the video, we're gonna hopefully be showing you some wild real life beaver dams and we're gonna have a little compare and see who's done it best. It's the beavers that do it best. Our rewilding project here on Glassy Farm is all about bringing life back to this riparian ecosystem that was formerly a monoculture of non-native trees planted for timber. When standing, these plantations are so dense and so dark that nothing can live within them. Their leaves are full of acid and due to the abnormally high number of trees, when it rains, all of this acid washes out into the rivers. This is extremely bad for aquatic life and is an issue that our river faces. Because even though on our project area, the spruce and elgon, further upstream are more plantations and all of that acid runs down and through glassy. Coupled with this problem is the general lack of life. There's very little native tree coverage, the river flow is singular and narrow, it's a landscape that is scarred by its former abuse, but it's also one that is slowly showing signs of recovery, and one which we see great potential in, and that's why we're kickstarting the process of rewilding in a few really exciting ways. Our connection with this project is with Duncan and Maya, who run River Revivers and are old friends of Mossy Earth. They introduced us to Julian, who owns Glassy, and wants to see it in a better state. Along with Ellie, our biologist, they are the team that manages this project. Now, we will be building the dams over the next few days, but before we get into that, let me catch you up on the progress of this project. Our work here on Glassy began earlier this year, building these exclosures next to the river and planting some native trees. By now, they've had a good spring and summer season to grow, so let's see how they're getting on. So these are trees which we planted back in January and I'm looking around and they're looking pretty good. Like here we've got a, I believe this to be an aspen. This is looking good. This is a really important tree for riparian habitats. Over here we've got a rowan which is looking pretty strong. We planted the trees in these exclosures because there's a lot of pressure from deer grazing here. One thing we've done is around the edge, we planted species like hawthorn, which is unpalatable, it's thorny, and the deers will come along, nibble it and be like, I don't want that. And in the middle, that's where we're planting the more palatable species, such as aspen. And so far, it's working and the trees are looking very healthy. Throughout the year, we also conducted some baseline surveys. This included a river habitat survey and a river otter survey. You see, here at Mossy Earth, we run our projects using a results-based approach, which includes both using existing research to inform our work and also publishing our findings through our conservation evidence partnership with the University of Cambridge. That is also why we're happy to have Alistair here doing some research on our dams, but more on him later. With all this in mind, there was one final survey we wanted to do. So, the day before we began constructing the dams, I headed out to help Ellie. So Ellie, why are we carrying, oh sorry, why are you carrying all this stuff? Um, what do we have here and what are we going to be doing? Uh, so we're going to go and do some river fly monitoring. Um, so we've got our net and then in here we've got all of the sorting equipment we'll need once we've got hopefully some insects in the net. Um, we're then going to sort through them and uh, this is what all of this is for. <laughs> yeah, I should probably help. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> If I'm going to claim that we're carrying stuff, then I kind of need to need to get involved. Kick sampling was used to gently coax the insects into the net. I had the important job of keeping time. For a total of three minutes, we took samples at different points around where we are building the dams. We then moved what insects we'd caught into the bucket, ensuring that we didn't leave any on the net before transferring them into a wider tray where Ellie, rather skillfully, transferred them into a sorting tray using a spoon. Why are these invertebrates important? Uh, it's because they're really sensitive to like changes in the water quality. Um, so they'll pick up on things like nutrient enrichment, sedimentation levels, flow levels, oxygenation. Um, each different family group that we're splitting them out into here have different levels of sensitivity. Uh, so your caddisflies are the most sensitive uh, and I've so far found one. Um, so that tells you quite a lot, but we've got quite a lot of some of the other species which are less sensitive. So this is a good sign 
It means we're not in completely dire straits, but there's also a lot of way we can go to support a whole range of more species. In addition to being an indicator species, they also form a huge part of the food chain in riparian ecosystems. So we're hoping that our dams will create conditions for more of these macroinvertebrates to thrive. It was really cool seeing them up close. I'm just thankful that they don't come any bigger. Now that all the baseline testing is done, we've updated the project management document and the project page to reflect this so you can stay up to date with the details. The link for this page will be in the description or you can find it on our Mossy Earth website. The following day, it was finally time to begin constructing our fake beaver dams. Led by Duncan and Maya, we headed up to the river. Trace. What you got there, Duncan? Yeah, I've got a spider. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the species. A nice big fat one. <laughs> Beautiful. After a quick briefing to discuss the plan of action, we gathered our wooden stakes and headed to the location to build the first dam. It is a little bit treacherous because this is an old clear fell site, so there's stumps and everything to trip over here. These wooden stakes were some of the only material brought in to construct our dams. The fact that Glassy is an old clear fell site means that there is no shortages of dam building materials on site. The first step to constructing our dams is creating a solid foundation of stones. So we're putting stones at the base because A, that's what beaver do, and B, we're trying to avoid scour underneath. We don't want the flow gouging out underneath the dam, so mm. a bit of stability at the base is the first step. We'd visited the River Tay to gather some willow, and that's the only other material sourced outside of Glassy. And here, you could clearly see the start of a real beaver dam where they had begun to create a curved foundation using stones. It was really quite impressive and something I would love to capture being created on film. So while we're laying the foundations of our dam over here, we're collecting some brash, which is just a word for old twigs and sticks and bits of wood. Didn't want to nibble it up before you, before you brought it over. Should, you should have. No, that looks like a good one. Yeah, look at that. So this is an old conifer, which we're using to build our dam. Probably just... a Sitka spruce this. Yeah, likely, yeah. Not much use for wildlife when it was alive. And it'll be an awful lot of use for wildlife now it's dead. That was very well put by Duncan because these spruce plantations from the outside to the unassuming eye just look like patches of woodland. But when you go inside, it's a completely different story. So this is our river, but just a little bit higher up. And I've come up here to show you that surrounding it is just some spruce plantations. Now, today it's a lovely, sunny Scottish summer day. And I'm gonna show you when you walk inside of one of these plantations, that the light soon fades and all you're left with is just shadow. Nothing can grow in here. Even the lower half of the trees are completely dead. There's no ground floor, there's no understory, there's one layer of life, and it's right up there, the tops of the trees. This is not good for biodiversity. And for our rivers, for our rivers here on Glassy, having these plantations so close to the river is really bad because in these needles is a lot of acid, and what happens in periods of high rainfall, all of that acid flushes out into the rivers, into the water, and it's really bad for all of the macroinvertebrates that live in there, and they form the base of the food chain. Not to mention it's bad for the fish too. And also with forestry, you also get a lot of disturbance, and that means that there's a lot of silt which flows into the water, and that suffocates all of the life as well. The answer to this is of course, not to plant spruce so close to rivers, but unfortunately at Glassy, this water flows down and through our project area. But the dams that we're building should act as a barrier to the sediment and trap it, filtering the water so it's purer as it passes through. This is Alistair and he's at university where he's conducting a study on our project here at Glassy. So my study will be looking at how sediment, like sands and gravels, moves through these beaver dams. So what I'm hoping to see is that at the top end we'll have sediment being caught by the dam, making a better habitat for insects and fish and also raising the level of the river where it's been incised down. And at the bottom end, what I'm curious to see is if there's more scouring happening, if you get maybe rougher sediment ending up here, and see if there's any impact that it maybe makes it incise more downstream. Hoping it doesn't, and that's why I'm doing the study to try and find out. Our first dam was really beginning to take shape, 
and if anyone remembers from the first Glassy episode, I thought it necessary to get into character, if you will, to think and move like a beaver. So I insisted that everybody really take this dam building seriously and channel their inner beaver. Golden Duncan, very good. Ooh. <laughs> While constructing our dams, we came across this little toad, this frog, and this baby shrew. Now, we were a little worried that this baby shrew wasn't going to make it. We eventually managed to find the area where we thought its nest was, where hopefully its mother would be waiting. There's the mummy that's popping out. It w came, it's coming out, but it keeps hiding back in. Yeah, it's probably a little bit scared of us, but we found a little baby shrew. Wait, it picked up something and just ran in. It might not be its mum, we don't know yet. We yeah. hope, though. We yet to find out. Yes. Hopefully. And sure enough, she did. Mummy's got the baby. Mummy's got the baby. Oh, nice. Yay. Woo. Reunited. <laughs> Along with the base of stones, the larger structural pieces of wood and brash, we are now adding sods of earth, reinforcing and packing them in, blocking up the gaps of the dam. In total, we're building three dams on Glassy. Here, here, and here. We've chosen these locations due to the natural curves of the river and low-lying land surrounding them, so that when the water backs up behind the dam, it's redirected into these areas, forming new channels and a diversity of permanent and temporary ponds. Creating a sequence of dams like this is actually how wild beavers do it, but I wanted to go and see how the pros do it with my own eyes, so I got some information from one of Scotland's leading beaver specialists, Roisin, and I headed out to find some real beaver dams. Yeah, I've come here because apparently there's some good signs of beavers and I can hear water and I'm already seeing some trees. Check out these trees. Oh, there's a dam already. There's a beaver dam already. Wow, this is epic. Look at all these little stumps. Look at all these stumps here. That's all beavers just felling trees. So I've just found this bit here on the side. Look at this, chewed and nibbled, stripped by beavers. Look at that. Smells great. So as you can see, I was in my element in this habitat and I thought the real beaver dams and our fake ones didn't look too dissimilar. Oh man, there's just so many dams here. Look, here's, there's another dam right here. This is a pretty big dam as well. Look at this. That's a pretty big dam too. This is what we tried to replicate, a series of dams. There's one here, there's one there. I can see there's one over there. There's one there. There's probably more up that way. In the last video, some of you asked, why didn't we just get some beavers in to build the dams at Glassy? Well, the main reason is because at Glassy, there's very few riverside trees. As you can see from this area, there are plenty of trees close to the river which the beavers had felled in order to create their dams. And although beavers are relatively close by to Glassy, our site is actually situated quite high up and there was no knowing exactly whether if beavers will make the journey up and certainly not for this degraded habitat. But there is no telling what might happen once the riparian habitat improves. And before we get back to our dams, I just have to show you this, a really special beaver engineered wetland. And to think that this is created by beavers, the reason why this is so awesome is because you've got the water, you've got the standing deadwood, there's still some live trees in here. It's just so dynamic and it's so full of life. Dragonfly just flying overhead there. There's, there's just all kinds of life buzzing around here. Back at Glassy, our dams were really starting to take shape. The final step was to add some willow. We headed down to the River Tay to gather some live willow, which we used to weave into our dams and drive into the sides of the riverbanks. Willow shoots have an incredible ability to take root and grow fast, so we're hoping this will strengthen our dams, but also add some much needed tree cover to our river. Now, if you are a member, you will have seen this pop up last week in the Your Impact section of your account, where you can see all the different projects you are supporting each month through project actions like this one, project costs like our recent rainforest purchase, or when we save up for a special project. And then Ellie also posted something in the updates tab where as a member, you can engage directly with the team. And I can promise you, we will answer every single comment on there. And yeah, if you're not yet a member, you're missing out. It really is fun to restore nature together, but above all, it's impactful and meaningful. And we're really happy to be able to do this work. 
So if you would like to learn more about all of our different projects, you can head over to mossy.earth where you can read all about what we do or you can also see our channel trailer here on YouTube that has a brief explainer. So it's my last morning here on Glassy and I thought I'd come up and see how the dams are doing and you know what, they're already working. This one is already much deeper than it was when we first started. The future of this, I think we're going to be building some more dams here, but we want to be sympathetic to the river. We want the river to lead the way, so we've built these dams, we're going to monitor and see what impact they have, and in the future potentially we're going to be building more. So that is very exciting, I get to get my beaver on again and build some dams. And of course, I've got to say thank you to our Mossy Earth members, because none of this would be possible without you, and you know what, maybe you're not a member yet, you're sitting on the fence a little bit, you're not sure, feel free to check out some of our videos. This is just a, a little taste of what we do here. Cool. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.